Philippine-Japan relations. How far back does it go? At least as far back as the Muromachi period of Japan from 1336 to 1573 when Japanese merchants settled in Luzon, establishing one of the oldest pre-colonial settlements in the Philippines. Trade with Japan has been documented as early as 1440, over 500 years ago. But is that the earliest time we had international relations with Japan? Or did it begin much, much earlier? Northern Luzon has yielded many hollow clay figurines of dried and unglazed terracotta that have stood the test of time. They appear to be haniwa, funerary figurines arranged on and around elite Japanese tombs during the Kofun period from 250 to 552 AD. Haniwa were created according to the Wazumi technique in which mounds of coiled clay were built up to shape the figure layer by layer. Some parts were made separately, then attached to the whole. Then the clay figure was paddled into the desired form. It is not unusual to find haniwa, dyed red, black, or white. Most haniwa have a cylindrical base with a flaring skirt-shaped portion above it, seen to represent the legs. Special patterns and designs were often sculpted into the haniwa, such as this tanko armor, used during the Kofun period. Compare it to the tanko armor worn by the haniwa found in Luzon. Some have the traditional Japanese sash, the obi, wrapped around their torso, like this lady who has donned a necklace and a bracelet to complement her attire. Haniwa funerary clay figurines may have saved numerous lives, replacing real people who would have been ritually sacrificed for the deceased. The 11th Emperor of Japan, Emperor Suinin, from 29 BC to 70 AD, was recorded to have ordered that, from now on, make it a rule to erect clay figures and not to hurt people. The presence of Haniwa on our islands could push back Philippine-Japan trade relations by about a thousand years. However, other artifacts discovered in Luzon could push that date back even further. Japan's earliest record of hollow clay figurines come from the Jomon period, made with similar methods to the Haniwa. Jomon terracotta clay pottery was coil formed without the use of a pottery wheel. Coils of soft clay mixed with shells, minerals, or other materials were used to form the object which was paddled to smoothen it inside and out. The clay form was fired outdoors at temperatures around 600 to 900 degrees Celsius. It was in the late Jomon period, from 1500 BC to 1000 BC, that new forms of pottery are developed for ceremonial purposes as well as anthropomorphic dogu figures and masks with goggle eyes. The late Jomon period was marked by advances in fishing techniques, rice cultivation, and metalworking with the populations settling nearer to the sea. There was also an increase in numbers and creative styles in their pottery. Could these developments have been stimulated by international maritime trade? Jomon pottery ranges from simple to extremely elaborate forms. Luzon has yielded pottery very similar in style and method of manufacture to Jomon pottery found by archaeologists. Compare the designs and forms of these coil-formed hand-paddled pottery found in the Philippines to those found in Japanese Jomon sites. In August 1975, a woman harvesting potatoes in her field facing the Pacific unearthed the largest hollow clay figurine in Japan. Upon investigation, the Board of Education determined that this terracotta sculpture 41.5 centimeters long, was from the late Jomon period and was made around 3,500 years ago. Four years later, the hollow clay figurine was designated as an important cultural property of Japan, and in 2007, it was declared to be a national treasure. The Japanese would probably be very surprised to discover that their national treasure has a twin brother who has just been awakened from his sleep in the Philippines. The hollow clay figurine, roughly 43 centimeters in length, was found 
in Luzon. Both Japanese and Philippine figures appear like broken clay dolls due to an unusual Jomon period practice observed by archaeologists. Archaeologists assume that in the mid Jomon period, people took a lot of trouble to make elaborate clay dolls and then destroyed them and took the pieces to different places. Out of 1,116 shards of clay dolls, only 22 pieces found a missing part, and even then, matching pieces were often found over a hundred meters away. Japan's national treasure and its Filipino counterpart both show ritual destruction in similar areas. If dating done on this hollow clay figurine should identify it as belonging to the Jomon period, then relations between Philippines and Japan may have started over 3,500 years ago. Like most artifacts featured in the Kasaysayan Hunters Channel, owners are open to non-destructive scientific testing on these hollow clay figurines. History Professor Boyet Manuel, Director of Filipino Mismatic and Antiquarian Society, reminds us, History is a powerful weapon. Claim, protect, and defend your history. Thank you for joining us in opening the book of our past in the hope of a brighter tomorrow.